Oh, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with another episode of Inside the Network, where we share exclusive content from Inside of BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself. And this clip is an exclusive snippet from a full interview I did with manager Nick Jorgensen. He works with the artist Orrin Major, and they've been able to accomplish quite a bit on their own and had true success in getting music listened to and marketing the music, which is why this topic is extremely important, right? People ask, singles, full projects, or how should I just even think and strategize about my music? I think this clip will bring a lot of clarity and it's a lot more straightforward than some of this advice a lot of people probably hear out there. So let's get into it. What's your opinion in terms of dropping full projects? Because so many people ask me this all the time. I already have my opinions. Um, and generally speaking, my answer is not really that big of a deal. But when it comes to dropping full projects, because you said Oren dropped his first project, right? 2017, mm -hmm. of course, I remember that. Now, why did you guys drop the full project as opposed to just dropping singles? People say, oh, you should only be dropping singles if you aren't this big artist or this signed artist and all that kind of stuff. What made y'all drop a project What did and what did y'all learn from it? Okay, so, uh, so real quick, um, I mainly agree with that statement that releases that are singles tend to do better than projects if you're not a well-known artist. Mm -hmm. um, second thing is that his album that dropped in 2017, uh, I was not a part of. That was before we had ever met. Um, and so he dropped that on his own and we pushed a couple of songs off of that, which did really well as singles. Um, and so we really stuck to the single mentality. But the reason that he's been dropping projects since then is because he's an artist first and artists want to put together projects that mean something to them. They have a message or they have, you know, just a sound that they want to get out and you got to let the artist do what he wants to do, you know? So what my theory is you put out singles, you figure out which ones work the best, which ones are being received the best, those go on the album and then you release the whole project and repeat. Got it. So he drops music, which ones work best? put those on the album, only those on the album, or now that you, you guys choose some, now he kind of takes this together as an artist and then constructs a, a meaningful package, right? Is that what happens? Yeah, so it, it's really, it's loose, you know, but if we see, oh, these two songs are really well, these have a certain sound that are kind of like the same theme, then he kind of builds around that. But it's mainly about what he has in his mind. Like he's, he'll send me a paragraph of like, I want this album to say this, you know? And so he really puts them together in his mind and then he executes on them. Got you. And then after the project, do you guys still push a single after the project? Yeah. Like, well, I mean, well, from the project, I mean. Right. Yeah. So it's, that's part of why singles are, are way more effective. It's because it's hard to push or promote an entire album. Um, you can push it as an idea, but to actually promote each song on an album is very difficult. Um, so that's why if you put out a whole album with a couple singles that do well, and then the rest of the album didn't do as well, it's not really a good look for you. Um, but we don't really care. We want to put out the music. We want people to listen to it. And we want to build up that independent catalog. Got it. Yeah, so, well, before we get off that, have you had a situation where, I don't know, okay, we got these two singles. Bam, we put this on a project, and the project's, eight songs long i'm just making that number up but and then y'all discover there's one more song out of that bunch that is worth pushing for a period of time and y'all work that individually for a period of time yeah or have y'all not got there yet yeah no definitely um after we release whatever it is whether it's a single or project or the song just picks up at a certain point from discovery weekly or release radar or something then we'll we'll go full force on that because you know obviously that's what's working right now Got you. Yeah. Got you. Okay. And it's interesting to hear you say no, no deeper than the fact that, Hey, he's an artist and he wants to pull out, put out full packages, full, full meaningful pieces of work. And yeah. that alludes back to what I said when I, before I asked the question, when I was like, Hey, my, my answer kind of is, is not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. I think people overthink that part of the process. What's more important is what you do after things come out because yes mm -hmm. i can have 
like making the choice as opposed to pushing the entire project i push individual songs yes it's out as an album cool i have an album but that doesn't i feel like it doesn't when people say that that you should only drop singles they're ignoring the fact that you still have the ability to still market songs separately even though mm-hmm. they're on an album you right know what i mean Right. So yeah, if you're only pushing singles, but they are also on an album, if those singles blow up, it's going to draw attention to the full project. Like there's no real downside to putting out music as long as it's quality and, and you like it. <laughs> That's it. Like it's, it's, there's, yeah. there are no, no rules, man. <laughs> right. That's, <laughs> what it, that's what's so crazy about now. <laughs> no rules to how you release. Look, I think the problem that people have though is they've been trained through school to think that there needs to be, you get what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like l- looking for somebody else's rule. I was just telling somebody yeah. else, like this is the only industry, right? Or not, maybe not the only, of course, but, but like in, in music, the problem a lot of artists have is they're trying to copy off of somebody's paper who has an A, right? right? But in this industry, you can copy off somebody's paper who has an A and you can get an F with those <laughs> same answers. <Yeah. laughs> like, but you can also yeah. have completely different answers and y'all both get A's. So there's no point of... Exactly. There's no right answer. Um, and so just for the example uh, purpose, for us, we've released so many different ways. Um, so he put out, he's put out three studio albums. Mm-hmm. Um, he has one R&B project that was just mm-hmm. a random thing he wanted to do. It's one of my favorites, did- actually. Right, Exo Heartbreaker. Um, and then he did 12 singles um, once a week just because he had a bunch of music stored up. I'm like, let's just do it. You have the music, let's do it once a week. We released once a week. Um, mm. He put out a three song EP just because three songs were similar. We had them ready, we put it out as an EP. So mm. there's just, there's no right answer. It's just put out the music, push it, see how the people like it and continue. And keep going. Yeah. Simple, simple. All right. Now, if you want to check out the full interview, of course, you can check it out on brandmannetwork.com, where, of course, we don't only just have that interview. We have a lot of resources when it comes to artists building their brains and developing it. We have workshops and also building your actual fan base. Right. What infrastructure is needed to make that happen? Of course, you can check it out at the link in the description below. Other than that, if you like this video, go ahead hit the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. If you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe.